but I am procrastinating by rambling because there's one part of this kitchen that I don't want to declutter at all. Okay, dare I say that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm gonna do as much as I can to this kitchen while still respecting that we don't own this house. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for today's video, which is going to be a huge kitchen declutter. I have not gone through our kitchen cabinets, drawers, pantry, all of that stuff in quite some time. And especially with having a baby in the household who's eating real food now, our needs for our kitchen have changed and evolved. That's why I haven't really been in this space because I had systems set up that worked for when it was just my husband and I, and now it's my husband, myself, and a baby that's eating in this kitchen and things have changed. So I'm excited to dig into these cabinets, rethink this space, declutter things, reorganize, clean it, because it's also a little bit dirty, and hopefully make this space a better, more functional room for our family. So let's get straight into this. Maddie is down for a nap. She just fought going down super hard for that nap. So I'm gonna use every possible second I have to make as much progress in here that I can. So um, I don't know where to start. Let's go look. I know a few things I wanna change in here are number one, the junk drawer. I wanna get rid of this entirely. We now have a desk in our house and I wanna move all of this stuff to the one drawer in the desk. And I'm thinking I'm gonna be turning this into a larger utensil drawer. I think I'm gonna minimize the crock that we keep on the counter. I think I can fit all of those utensils down in this cabinet. This drawer homes all of the other cooking utensils. So I think I want to minimize and simplify this a little bit, move some of these items over to that drawer. So I think we'll start there. I have a lot of other drawers to dip into and clean out and organize. Some major decluttering is probably gonna be happening in our coffee cabinet. But since the junk drawer project was the first one that came to mind, that's where I'm going to start. Also, if Madeline wakes up from her nap and doing the junk drawer is all I get done today, I'll still be happy with that progress. That was extremely simple. I am gonna just throw all of this in the desk drawer. I'm gonna worry about organizing that space a different day. Today I'm focusing only on the kitchen and so I'm gonna just carefully migrate all of this over to that desk. I bet you think that I should calm down And that I'm overthinking everything about you This drawer is nicely organized and cleaned out and I like that I have some empty space. Also, I showed this knife organizer when I set it up. It's a really affordable one from Amazon and my verdict on it is that I love it. It saves so much space, it keeps our knives organized. The only flaw that I have with it is like this second layer of knives. Sometimes when you open and close the drawer, it can move around a bit but it's saved so much space and is so functional otherwise that I'm willing to look past that minor flaw and I highly, highly recommend it. I also just use this other organizer. I guess I could just spread these out. What would this, let me try this. I think I might actually uh, put this guy away. I used to have it just to contain things a little bit more, but it's more spread out and easier to access like this. So maybe I'll rethink this, but I think it's pretty functional like this. I don't know. Do any of you guys keep your drawers like this, just the loose items rolling around? I do find myself digging through this bin a lot of the time and I have cut my finger more times than I care to admit on the peeler tool. So maybe this will lessen the amount of times I cut myself. And I'm also willing to try organization things that I haven't done in the past. So I'm gonna put this away. I'll still hold on to it. And worst case scenario, if I don't love that organization system, I'll just change it. So I'm gonna try this out for a bit, see how we feel about it. I'll see if Christian likes it. 
if there's any flaws to it, and then I'll, I'll let you guys know in the future. So make sure you're subscribed to see how all this changes going forward. I'll link a past kitchen declutter here so you can see how my needs and my organizing style have evolved and changed. Our baby grows so fast and her needs are always changing, so our home is always changing and evolving. So I'll link an organization video for our kitchen in the past year. I have tons of them on this channel, but it's just another idea of more things that have changed in our life. And if you need more organization ideas, like right now, spur of the moment, going to ditch an organizer, which is very not me. Normally I love organizers and extra things in my kitchen, but in that drawer, I don't think it's necessary. So we'll see how that works out. We should work it out. You know we should work it out. Before I'm too invested, I should probably ask you, ask you all my questions, get to know you better. this drawer full of random kitchen gadgets and then I realized that I kind of wasn't organizing this as best as I should. I wasn't grouping things together. So now in this drawer I have all of the loose random kitchen gadgets. I know a lot of people don't love having like single use utensils but I love my apple slicer, my juicer, my cheese grater and then Christian loves having a burger press. And so all of those are gonna just float over here. And then this organizer, I'm actually gonna repurpose it here for all of my baking supplies. So my whisk, my baster, I guess actually Christian uses this for grilling, that'll go in there. But a cookie scooper, a spatula, my measuring cups and spoons, that'll be my baking category. And that's like the division and organization in this drawer. And I took out the drawer liner that I had in here and I moved it into here. That way all of these loose items won't slide around as much. So that makes a lot more sense in my head. And from those two drawers, I pulled out two different categories that I wanna rehome. I have all of Madeline's little baby utensils and I wanna create a space that's just for baby stuff. And I also have stuff for drinks and mixing drinks and wine stoppers and bottle openers. We keep our um, drink stuff in another location. So I want to put all of that there. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for. In uh, I have to admit, I just placed this giant box of chocolate in this cabinet maybe an hour or two ago. I grabbed it at Costco in like the um, Christmas like cookie section. And last year I bought a, what's it called? An advent calendar that was way overpriced for 24 chocolates. And this is 46 chocolates. So that means we can have about two a day all the way up till Christmas. But it also means I need to hide it from my husband until Christmas because he already saw it and was like, oh, chocolate, great. And I was like, no, we're saving this. So I hit that up there to hide it. I need to find a better home for it actually until the month of December. And let me know in the comments if I'm crazy for buying advent calendars in September. Yes, it's September. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright.
I didn't change much in this cabinet. Oh, very overexposed. But it's just all of our everyday dishes. I also keep little dishes up top. This works super well for us and has since we moved into this house. Now this cabinet, I know corner cabinets are the bane of most people's existence, but I think this one has worked really well for us. And I have just only now made an adjustment to how it was organized. I used to have all of our Tupperware on this bottom shelf, but I ran upstairs and grabbed some little organizers that I found to hold all of Maddie's little dishes and utensils. Side note, how stinking cute is this little suction cup Mickey Mouse plate? I also grabbed the matching Minnie Mouse uh, utensils to go with it, but besides the point, this is where I plan to have her baby stuff for now. It makes sense in my head because it's right next to our dishes, but there really isn't room in here for us to put her dishes. So as her collection grows, as she eats more and our needs for snacking and that stuff grows, I think this bottom shelf will be a great solution for that. I also have stashed our bigger Tupperware containers down here. And then I moved our medium and small ones up to the second shelf. They're the only thing on this shelf. So that's why this corner cabinet works for us. I think the trap of the corner cabinets is that things can get tucked behind corners and shoved the way back that you forget about, you don't know you have, and never get used or like just junk falls back there and dies basically. And I never do that. I make sure I only put stuff towards the front. I try not to overstuff it. I definitely have spent the time curating a smaller collection of kitchen items though, so it makes it easier for me not to have everything bursting at the seams. And I'm sure as Maddie grows and lunch boxes and bento boxes and those things come into our life, our needs will change. But I definitely try to focus on keeping our collection smaller so it's more manageable. That way these corner cabinets are a blessing with lots of room to breathe and not a curse where things just get stuffed in the back and die. Also on the top I just have a couple serving platters. Sometimes we reach for these for parties or snack platters or serving meats or grilling or things and those are easy enough to grab up there. Spice cabinet has not changed since I organized this a while ago. The top has some random loose items, sprays, oils, things that are less used. That's why they're harder to reach because we don't need them as often. The next shelf has our salt and our pepper, any spices we use in bulk like garlic and chili powder. And these little oil decanters are super helpful for having our uh, oils easy to pour. And I just have the refills for them along the back. I also have these super extra matching labeled spice jars and I love them. I take the time to refill them and they bring me joy and they work in our household. So I definitely recommend doing that. But I know that's not everybody's cup of tea. Decanting little spices into individual jars does not work for everybody. So I'm not saying you have to go ahead and do this. I'm just saying that it works for me and I love it and it makes me happy every time I need to go find a spice in here. I've also got a donation bin going. Um, some things in here are random Tupperwares that we don't use. I got this sterilizer as a baby shower gift and never touched it. So better off at somebody else's house. It's brand new. I'm sure somebody's going to love that. Above the fridge is where we store our mixed drink supplies and baking dishes. And I'm going to be moving some vases and water jugs up there too and just tidying it a little bit. Nothing too crazy up here, just rearranging some things and finding homes and grouping things better. Now, besides the fact that our pantry is just stuffed from a Costco run I just made today, it's not in that bad of shape. I'm just gonna stash the chocolates up in there, and I'm also pulling out our old chocolate jar. This glass jar from Ikea is what I used to stash all of our chocolates in, but I have a much better thing to put our chocolates in now. I hit the absolute jackpot at Goodwill a couple weeks ago and found this guy in there, a really large cookie jar, flour jar, whatever you wanna use them for. And he has been sitting on my counter empty. And I just realized he is the perfect little treat jar. Now, sadly, the only chocolate I have is this singular dub chocolate. But that is the new chocolate jar in the house. Now, in between the fridge and the oven is where that utensil crock used to be. But since I downsized enough that everything is in the drawers, our toaster looks kind of lonely over there and I'm torn. I, one, I hate this toaster. It looks very cheap. Well, it is cheap. It's a $20 toaster from Walmart when we first got married and decided we needed the toaster. And it does not match my aesthetic. It's not pretty. And I'm tempted to hide it away. 
I have one more cabinet down here that I haven't gone into that I want to mess with and I might start stashing our toaster over there. I don't know how impractical that is because we do use it maybe once a day and I don't think it would be terrible to pull it out of that cabinet. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna <laughs> take our toaster, give it a new home, and then once I wipe down this whole area, it is covered in crumbs from the toaster stuff, I think this little chocolate jar would be cute over there. What do you think? Even in the hard time, you and I can weather any storm. I've said a couple times already that I've worked really hard to make sure our kitchen is really simplified, which is why this corner cabinet is also not the bane of my existence and relatively empty. I have a measuring cup, we keep our oven mitts, and then I have our blender and a coffee grinder that honestly, I don't think we need this anymore. We've upgraded to an electric grinder that's just on the thing, the thing, the counter words, so this can go in donation. I also keep our air fryer and a waffle maker, and then this bin has all of my other baking supplies, so a sifter, we have a little fondue kit, a hand mixer, some cupcake liners, just the basics. So I think it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It shouldn't be a big deal at all to just relocate our toaster to right here, and then that'll be really simple to just pull out when I need it. So that's where that's going to live for now. I've said it already, but I'm gonna repeat myself anyway. If I hate it, it doesn't work out, I can just change it. What's the harm in trying this living in a cabinet for now? 2 a.m. in the car playing our favorite song Turn it up, windows down Okay, I love this little change. We do have a butter dish we keep on the counter next to our little candy jar. And then over here, I shared this in my fall makeover, but my sister-in-law has an Etsy shop that I'll link down below. And she does uh, the roadways and waterways of cities. And Vienna is a very special city to Christian and I. So I have that print in there, which I love dearly. And just these two little pumpkins. And it's the perfect little neutral touch. It makes me happy when I come into my kitchen and cook but I am procrastinating by rambling because there's one part of this kitchen that I don't want to declutter at all. If you've been following for a while, you know that my husband is a coffee connoisseur. He loves his coffee beans. He's very particular about it. He makes a very mean pot of coffee, so I don't question it because I love to have his coffee in the morning. But we have lots of coffee mugs, coffee supplies, coffee beans, everything related. Like this entire cabinet is all coffee and tea. And I really am kind of running out of steam on this project. So I'm gonna keep rambling to you guys for a minute before I gather the courage to get in here and make this space make sense. The summer night has just begun. Okay, dare I say that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was able to get rid of two mugs, which is an accomplishment for me because for some reason I'm attached to all of my mugs. I love them dearly. And we were able to just clean up some things. There was some trash in there, things we haven't used in a while. I was able to eliminate one of our bags of coffee beans by putting it into our electric grinder. I also wiped down the counters and simplified this. And I've mentioned this a couple of times. I just struggle with this area of my kitchen because I don't think it's very cute. I like things to be aesthetic and home decor-ish, but I just can't find any coffee makers or electric grinders that are pretty. I found a water kettle that I really like. Basically, I just want it to be white and simple and not the aluminum and black and the steel stuff. So this is what we have for now. 
Christian knows I would love to have a pretty coffee maker, like the really pretty, like all white Nespresso ones. We had an Nespresso that we actually sold. We loved it dearly. We just stopped reaching for it as much as this kind of coffee. Christian loves picking up the beans, grinding them fresh, all of that stuff. And we didn't want that many things out on our counter. So that's actually made a big improvement is just having fewer machines out there. And I know having three coffee machines is still pretty intense, but it works for us. But what I'm trying to say is I am planning on doing um, a little coffee bar makeover. I have a couple of cute little decor things coming in from Target, Amazon. I went to Anthropology the other day. I want to make this corner cute and I don't know how to make it cute with the appliances. So I'm going to do what I can with home decor and accessories. But if you know any like cute standard coffee makers, let me know. This Meg one is really cute, but it has terrible, terrible reviews. So I might have been able to justify buying like a $200 drip coffee maker that was cute, but it has terrible reviews. So I'm, I'm not, I can't buy a bad appliance just for its appearance. It has to be both, but I'm willing to splurge a little bit for something that fits the bill. But I'm gonna be doing that little coffee bar makeover and an entire little kitchen makeover in a video coming up. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you do not miss that video. It'll be a full renter-friendly DIY kitchen makeover. I'm gonna do backsplash, I'm gonna do hardware. I'm gonna do as much as I can to this kitchen while still respecting that we don't own this house. <laughs> so if you wanna see that video, it should be coming out in the next couple of weeks. I am starting to get things for that project in slowly. And this little coffee bar area is definitely one I'm going to focus on. But with that little corner, tidied up the cabinet looks much much better it's way less overwhelming now it's still a lot of stuff but we're big coffee people these cabinets i'm gonna just leave alone they work really well for us i have our lovely caraway pans and their organizers in the lids our crock pot you already saw a sneak peek into all of these drawers these are super functional for us and so i'm not gonna mess with it just to mess with it we keep our ziploc bags and grilling utensils here and then rags down in the bottom drawer also under our kitchen sink is really tidy. I love having this Lazy Susan for all of our normal appliances. And then I have backup products in this little Ikea bin. Oh, one little update I've made recently is adding these pretty Etsy labels to our dish soap and hand soap. It is super extra and probably a little pricey for what they are, but they do make it look a little bit classier, a little bit nicer. And I've had these soap pumps going here for at least a year now, refilling them and reusing them. And I love how simple and clean they make the kitchen area look. I filled a full box from our coffee Costco run earlier today with all of my donations. And the only thing left to do in this video is to thank you guys for following along. And one little tip, Christian and I recently got into a little tiff over my decluttering. I got rid of something that he wishes that I did not declutter. I didn't talk to him about it. So before I pass this box along to Goodwill, which I'm hoping will happen this week, I'm gonna show him it and ask him if there's anything in there he wants to keep. But just a little reminder that when you're decluttering, sometimes you're getting rid of things so frequently that your partner is not included in that decision and it could be their item they're decluttering or something that you didn't realize they used. So I learned the lesson the hard way. I'm gonna ask Christian if he cares to look through this kitchen box before I send it off to Goodwill, have at it, and then I'm gonna take it off to Goodwill within a day or two or something. So definitely gonna have him be a part of that process, even if he's not a part of like the going through every single cabinet with me because he's working, but I'm rambling now. Ask your partners before you get rid of everything. Save yourself the frustration and the possible argument. But that's gonna be a wrap on this video. Thanks so much, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.